Well, now I'd like to introduce you the parameters of the Spatial Audio Designer. This is the top line of the plugin, where you can do some general editings. Here you can edit the name of the mix module. Have in mind that this name is connected to the send modules. So, if you change this name in the production, you will lose the connection to the send modules. You can reconnect them, but if you think about that before, you can prevent this. Alright, and here you can find the user menu. It's a very good idea to have a look into it, because there are many more good information. Ok, here you can choose the format you like to work in. Right now it's 9.1, but you can change the format any time to cross-check your mix in another environment. We provide any standard 2D and 3D format available in the market and some new ones. Now I'd like to introduce you the send module list. Here you can see the names of the available parameter columns. Alright, these icons here in the beginning are for grouping send modules to do grouped parameter editings. Anytime you can remove send modules by clicking the icons again. By the way, a double click on the parameter knob resets the parameter to default, as well as with clicking on the knob with holding Alt. If you click on this mouse over parameter values, you can type exact values by using the keyboard. For multiple selections, you can use list editing while holding the shift key. The next icon here in the list is for managing the display status of the parameters here in the list, as well as here in the panning unit. That helps a lot to manage the audio sources, because you can keep the overview free. And you can also click on this icon while holding ALT to open or close all of them. The color ID helps to keep the overview here in the panel, as well as here in the list. Well, here at the side of the channel ID, you have a position preset. That enables you to put a sound source to a dedicated position instantly. That also helps to manage sound source quick and easy, as well as correctly. But that's not really spectacular for a mono sound source, but if you have a multi-channel sound source like this surround sand here, it helps a lot. If you now click this icon, you will find the three standards to position six sound channels like 2 plus 2 plus 2 or 5 for 1. Alright, now we go back to the beginning of the list and this is the solo and the mute knob as well as the volume knob. We are a plug-in, but in Pro Tools unfortunately inserts are pre-fade, not post-fade. Because of that, you lose the solo, mute and volume. That's one reason you get these parameters from us on the list. Fortunately, some other workstations like Nuendo or Sequoia has post-fader plugins, so you don't need this here. You can use that one from the workstation, but you can't use this here. It's up to you. Well, this is the LFE level, and here you can find the LFE menu. This menu enables you to set the LFE level pre or post master level of the send module. The LFE only checkbox makes this channel of this send module to a LFE only signal. A very helpful function, because, for example, if you have a 5 source, you don't want to have this LFE signal in the other channels, just in the LFE channel. And because of that, you don't want to see this signal in the panning unit where you can manage here. Here we have divergency for each dimension separately. Everybody who has practice with surround production knows this parameter very well. X-axis, in this case, where a signal is placed on the center channel, feeds the signal also on the left and right front channels. Y-axis feeds the signal here in the left and right surround channels. And Z-axis feeds the signal to the height left and right channels. Finally, we find here the X, Y, Z coordinates, who are dependent to the panel position here. And here, as before, we can type exact parameter values in the mouse over parameter box. Alright, now we talk about the panning unit. We work in a three-dimensional room with our audio sources. And you can look into it here from above and here from behind. And here you can see the icons of the available speaker channels dependent to the preset you choose. 
With a mouse over, you get the information about the speaker ID. This empty icon here indicates that there is a height layer where we have a left and right height channel, but not a center height channel here. These icons have another function. You can edit the level of the selected signal for this speaker channel. So in that case, it doesn't mean that the center channel volume is affected, but only how much of the signal is played back over the center channel. So in a case like that, where a signal is placed in the center channel position, you can manage how much of this signal is be played back over the center channel. Like that, you have the possibility, for example, to do a panning at the front without involving the center channel. So it's up to you to decide how much of a signal you want to have in which speaker channel. And of course, each of these parameters are automatable. And here you can do also a reset to default parameters while doing a double click or clicking while holding Alt on the icon. And in the mouse over boxes here, you can type parameters directly with the keyboard too. Well, we have another very useful function to manage the audio signals in the panning unit. If you go with the mouse over a desired speaker channel icon and click on it while holding Control, the signal jumps immediately to that position. So you're able to manage your audio sources very quick and precise in a 3D space, as well as well known from common surround panels in the market. All right, at the left side of the panning unit here, you will find some, let's say, helpers for the editing in the panel. The x-axis option enable or disable editings on the x-axis. That helps a lot if you want to do, for example, a source movement from left front to hide right surround. Because of this is a 2D interface, you have to do two automation recordings, one after another. Left front to right surround and mid to hide layer. But if you do the second automation, you will destroy the x-axis parameters of the first automation. Because of that, you get the possibility to disable the x-axis and then do without any problem the z-axis automation in the right display. Auto select helps a lot to manage audio sources in the panning unit. If you enable the option, you can click on any displayed audio source, sometimes you didn't catch it as you can see, and move it anywhere you want. But sometimes you have the problem that an audio signal is covered by another one, as in this case where one is in the height and one in the middle layer, or you have too many audio signals here in the panning unit. For that case, you should disable the auto selection function. Right now you can edit only the sound source of the selected send channel in the list. Level lock finally prevent that you edit the speaker channel levels by accident. Well, that's what you should know about the panning interface. Finally, we will talk about the virtualization unit. If it is disabled, you will hear a simple stereo down mix or fall down of your mix. Here in the location menu, you can choose different room environments. Depending to the speaker channel layout, you choose a preset. In 501, some more are available because we measured more rooms in 501 as 9.1 or 22.2. That's all for now in the location menu. Last but not least, the dance parameter. That parameter increase the uncorrelated low end and fill the room between the vertical speakers. So increase or decrease the dense. There is no default value and I cannot recommend one. It depends very much to the mix. My experience is that a classical production, for example, can have a lot more dense because of there's more space and the low end is not so critical as in a modern pop production. And that's all for now about the parameters of the SAD. Now I'd like to give you a preview of what's going on in the next tutorial. For that, I start a track from the project for Census 2. Got a stereo. Vector 3D. It's almost heaven. To show you the solo knobs. Left, front, center. And now I like to virtualize my voice.
All right, now you can hear me in the center channel. The left front, right front, right surround, left surround, left surround height. And now we head to the right height, the right channel, back to the center, to the left, and that's it.